Hi Aries, welcome to May. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. So this month we have Venus and Mars and Mercury. Wait, we have a Mercury retrograde. Venus and Jupiter and Mars are moving into your sign. We've got two eclipses and a new moon at the end of the month. And what else? Did I leave anything out? So there's a lot going on this month, and we'll talk about that later. But let's see what the cards say for Aries. What does Aries need to know about love and relationships for the month of May? May is going to be a busy month, especially with the eclipses. We start the month off on the heels of the new moon eclipse in Taurus, which, is, which actually happened in April on the 30th. But it will be in effect for the month of May and for the next six months, the energies, until the next eclipse, the next new moon. So let's see what we need to know. What does Aries need to know about love and relationships for the month of May 2022? What is coming up? And plus we have to deal with the Mercury retrograde this month, which happens on the 10th until June 3rd. So let's see, what does Aries need to know? This is the uh, Morgan Greer tarot deck, for those who are interested. Okay, Seven of Pentacles, the Strength card, the Nine of Swords, the Four of Cups, the Two of Cups, the Three of Cups, the Two of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, the Chariot, and the Ten of Pentacles. And the card at the bottom of the deck is the Page of Cups. So I think love could be on this month. So you're starting out the month with the Seven of Pentacles. Um, this is a card of planting seeds and waiting to see what's going to develop. So you may have... Um, either started a relationship in the recent past or planting seeds on how you're going to deal with relationships. You're kind of waiting. I feel I don't feel like anything is really has completed. You're just kind of, I mean, if you're in a relationship, you're saying, well, where is this going? And if you're looking for love, you may be starting to do things that can help you uh, connect with people. Now you have the strength card, which is crossing this. So the strength card is about learning how to deal with your emotions. It's about taming the beast within, taming that um, passionate, reactive nature. Um, you might be dealing with your own, how you express anger. You could be dealing with, you know, how do I get my needs met without blowing up, without being, you know, going coming apart, having a major come apart. If it's not you, you could be dealing with someone who has anger issues. But this is like a card of um, self-control, not over, learning how to not overreact, not going to extremes of emotions, either positive or negative. Um, so it's about more about, I feel it's more about self-control, but it could also be about how dealing with someone um, who is exhibiting those those issues. So you might be trying to tame someone in your life that's out of control. So if it's not yourself, it could be your partner. You have the nine of swords in the recent in the past here. So it could possibly be you because you're this is a card of mental stress and worry and sometimes feelings of guilt. So um a lot of times though what the nine of swords represents your mind is working overtime. And you're worried about all these things that could potentially go wrong, but a lot of it will not happen. You might be overthinking things. And I can see that you are with this Two of Swords here. You've also got this in your negative thinking sector. Um, so I feel like you're, if you're thinking about a relationship, you may be um, overthinking things or feeling guilty about maybe things that you've, how you've acted in the past, maybe you were overreactive, maybe you exhibited anger, or you, you didn't know how to release your anger in a healthy way. Uh, a lot of times the strain card is learning how to get your needs met through kindness instead of anger, instead of having like this, you know, being demanding and being um, like having an angry show. Um, you have the Four of Cups here, 
in the recent past. So I feel like you may have been feeling bored or um, unappreciated in a relationship. And you're thinking, well, you know, for these are for people who are in a relationship. You might be thinking, I'm not getting what I deserve in this relationship. I don't feel like I'm being treated fairly or I'm not being recognized for everything that I contribute. Maybe I should start looking for something else. Maybe I should see what else is out there. Um, because And there's a cup coming out. I feel like someone is offering you their love and you because you have the page of cups here, which is a message of love. Someone may be wanting to let you know that they care about you. But I feel that for some reason you're you're not really accepting this cup. It's like it's it's either that it's not what you're looking for or you're not sure that this is the right thing. Um, you're kind of holding back. But I feel like this energy is passing. Now this is a passing energy. Uh, maybe you were just worried about too many things. You know, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm the right person or if they're the right person. So you've been debating a lot in your mind, wondering if you should accept this cup of love or not. Coming up in the future, though, you have the Two of Cups. That's a soulmate connection. And the Three of Cups. Um, sometimes the Three of Cups can mean a third-party situation where you might be trying to choose between two people. But it can also mean getting out more and socializing and meeting up with friends and support, you know, being part of a group where you feel supported. So if you're not in a relationship this month, getting out and socializing and networking and getting together with friends, you know, you need to get out more. It, it can lead you to meet someone that you could have a significant relationship with. Um, if you are in a relationship, it could be that you've had a falling out because you had the two of swords here. There's a card of two people that are not like you care about each other, but you're both very stubborn or you're not um, communicating right now. The Two of Swords is about, you know, breaking the ice, being vulnerable, dropping your guard. So you may feel like I want to tell someone how I feel or someone may want to tell you how they feel because you had this page of cups here. But you're kind of like, I'm, I, I don't know. Um... I'm waiting for them to show me a sign or they're waiting for you to show you show a sign. Like, like you're both waiting for the other person to break the ice. So Aries, you have the courage. You're, you know, the, you're, you're the um, warrior of the Zodiac. It's up to you. You're going to break the ice. I think you need to break the ice. If you've had a standoff with someone, if you've had an argument with someone, um, you may want to be the one to break the ice or it may never happen. Because I feel like whoever you're dealing with is very sensitive and very, um, maybe a little shy. So they're not going to be the one to make the first move. You're going to have to do it. And you're okay with that, I think. You know, you have courage. Um, you're not afraid of rejection like some of the other signs. Um, the only thing that I would not do is overthink things. And uh, you really need to sit down and have a talk with someone. And really be honest and lay your cards on the table. And say, look, this is what I want from a relationship. This is how I feel about you. How do you feel about me? You know, you need to talk it out with this two of swords and um, not be afraid to hold back because I think you have the potential to, um, to have a significant connection. There may be a situation, you got the six of pentacles here, where one of you, you may feel like the relationship is a little bit imbalanced, where one person is doing all the giving and the other person is doing all the taking. So if that's you, it could be why, if you're the taker, you could be feeling guilty about it. That could be part of the problem. Uh, if it's the other person, you just need to um, have a more uh, more balance, create more balanced. Maybe the other person feels like they're sacrificing everything. They're always the one um, taking the initiative, you know, doing things to keep the relationship together. Maybe they're tired of it and they want you to show some interest or some you know, you to take some action, you to do put some work in. So if this is something that you really care about, if it's someone that you really want to connect with, you may have to do a little bit more work this month. And a lot of times when you have these two cards here, the, the strength and the nine of swords, especially for people that are in a relationship, having difficulties, counseling could really help. I feel like this is a card of, you know, there are some, you may have some emotional blockages about connecting with someone on an intimate level um, that you need to work out. Some fears, some 
psychological um, issues that you might feel like I'm not worthy on some deep level. Um, not you maybe you're afraid to accept love. Maybe you don't trust it. Um, so if it could be you or your partner, counseling would help if you're in a partnership. It would help bring harmony and balance back to the relationship. Now, just having the six here, the sixes represent harmony. So harmony is possible. It could be that the other person does want to have harmony. They want to have more balance. Um, maybe, But maybe you've been relying too much on someone else doing everything, and you need to step up to the plate this month. Um, you have the chariot here in your wish fulfillment sector. Now, the chariot is a card of victory to through discipline and focus. So I feel like maybe you have too many irons in the fire. Maybe you've been spreading yourself too thin. It could be work projects. It could be even if you're dating. Maybe you've got too many people out there, too many choices, and you have to narrow it down. Who do I really want to be with? Eliminate whatever is not really working. If someone's not right for you and you feel it, you know, eliminate that. You don't have the energy to give to everyone. But the chariot is telling you, you need to focus on what you really want and put your energy toward that goal. And if it's a relationship or a person, um, it's, you need to just focus your energies on something positive, like making something happen. Also, it's a card of don't let your mind take you all over the place. Like the, These two horses represent our thoughts. And the victory that comes through the chariot is controlling your thoughts, not being led all over the place by your emotions, by your thoughts. You know, one day I want this, one day I want that. One day the horse is taking me here, then it's taking me there. This, these represent your mind and your desires. You have to, you know, you you have to be in control. You have to focus your energy, and you can't be to everything to everybody. You can't be in a, a, a committed relationship if you're all over the place. You know. So you're going to have opportunities to socialize this month with the Three of Cups. And you may have more than one choice to make. You, have to, you may have to choose. Who do you really want to be with? And once you make that decision, right now you're on the fence with the Two of Swords. Like, I don't know what, if I want to choose or not. You know, I'm on the fence. I don't know what to decide. I don't know what's right for me. So give it some thought, but don't dwell in your head. You need to have a conversation with someone. But then the final outcome is the Ten of Pentacles. So there's someone in your life that's that can be really good for you. That can make you either you're wanting to. The Ten of Pentacles is the wealth card. It's the financial security card. It's but it's also feeling safe, feeling at home with someone, where you feel like nurtured and protected. So you feel like you're connecting with someone who's there for you, who has your back. So you could be dealing with someone that is financially stable. And that takes some worry. If you've been worried about finances, that takes some of the worry off your mind. Um, if you've been struggling with making ends meet, um, that can help. So I feel like it could go either way. Either you're the person struggling or you're connecting with someone where you're the benefactor and you're the one who's um, helping this person out of a financial jam. And together, you feel more secure with each other. You feel like you could create this happy home and this secure home. I think that's what's important this month, that you're really going to connect with someone that you... If you've had disappointing relationships in the past where you weren't really getting what you needed, I feel like this month you have the potential to meet someone that you could really connect with. Or, or if not, you can heal a current relationship to make it more uh, satisfying and make and so that you feel more secure in it. But you are going to have to step up to the plate and take action and be more involved. You, you're not, you, you can't wait for the other person to do the work. You're going to be the one. You need to be the one to break the ice if you've had a falling out or be proactive and take action uh, to help heal the relationship. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So we start the month off. We've got a lot to talk about with astrology this month. That with the new moon eclipse happened on the 30th. And this is going to be in effect. And it's conjunct until the next eclipse. Uh, the next new moon eclipse. Which will be in October. So it's got a six month kind of um, time frame. It's not like a regular new moon or full moon. Which usually just operates for 30 days within that month. So this moon is conjunct Uranus. And it's sextile Mars. 
and it's happening in your second house. So financial issues are coming to a head. Um, if you have any anger issues this month, it's good to talk them out. Mars is giving you the courage to bring things up out of this, to deal with psychological blockages. So if you've ever thought about it, have, get, talking to a counselor, now's the time to do it. Now, the other positive things that are happening is you got Venus, Jupiter, and Neptune all in Pisces in your 12th house with Mars. Until they, then they're going to start to move into Aries, so you're going to feel better. You may have felt like being more of a hermit in April, toward the end of April. Uh, you're doing a lot of thinking, doing a lot of soul searching. What's right for me? How do I ma manifest my dreams? Um, Pluto just turned retrograde at the end of April on the 29th. And it's in your 10th house. So it's going to be, you're, you're going to be thinking about career and also my life direction. Where do I want to go with my life? You know, do I want to get a, do I want a commitment? Do I want to change jobs? Do I want to take a position of power? Do I want to feel, you know, you have to, you're becoming, you're feeling more empowered in your life direction. Like you want to take action to bring you what you need. And especially if it's finances, if you feel like you're struggling financially, it's time to take action to change that, either through a new job or connecting with a, with someone that helps you in some way, that together when you work together, um, you, you know, you're successful as a team. Because the Two of Cups can be a romantic um, partnership, a soulmate connection, but it can also be a, a strong friendship or a partner in business um, where you really see eye to eye. Because Pluto is trining Mercury in your third house. And Mercury is moving into Gemini at this at this eclipse. Mercury is at zero degrees Gemini. So it's very the zero degree point is very um, significant. It's strong. It's a new beginning. New way of thinking. A new way of communicating. It's in your third house. And Mercury is strong in the third house. And it's in its own sign. In Gemini, it's in its home sign. So it's a good time for contracts, for signing contracts and agreements for creating partnerships that are going to help your career in some way. Um, so you have the opportunity to, to manifest a dream. Whatever, if you can think it, if you can dream it, you can make it happen. So get out of your head. Um, and if you have to heal any psychological blockages, now's the time to do it, to overcome those gremlins that say, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, whatever. You know, the, the um, what do they call that? Um, the imposter syndrome. If you're dealing with any kind of feelings of imposter syndrome, now's the time to get get rid of it. If you have any residual anger that you have that you need to deal with from the past and release because it's controlling you from a psychological point, now's the time to do it. Because um, Taurus, you know, the North Node is in Taurus. It's in your second house, and that's the house of self self worth. What do I value? Am I getting what I need? Am I getting what I deserve? So now's the time to rethink how you go after those things and make the proper connections. So then on the 15th, so then let's see. Let me talk about these dates. So Venus moves into Aries on the 3rd of May. And then Mercury goes retrograde on the 10th. Jupiter moves into Aries on the 11th. And then your ruling planet Mars moves into Aries at the end of the month on the 25th. So by the time we get to this full moon here, this eclipse, um, a lot of planets are already in Aries. Mars will be there at the end of the month. But Venus, now this full moon eclipse is in Scorpio. And it's conjunct the North Node. So it's telling you, you got to deal with your financial issues. you got to deal with your issues around self-worth. The full moon brings things to light. So you may, may have certain realizations like, oh, now I see what I what's going on in this situation. Um, but this is positive because this moon is trining Pluto. Uh, well, the sun is trining Pluto. The moon is sextile Pluto uh, in your 10th house. The only, um, and Mars, it's trining Mars and Neptune. So Mars is giving you the um, courage and the energy to manifest the dream, Neptune. Um especially because it's in your 12th house, you're tired of letting yourself be controlled by by the past and by unconscious programming. Um, you really want to put an end to something that's been holding you back. And you can really you have the courage to look at that right now. The only problem with this 
full moon is the square to Saturn. There's a T-square with Saturn, and Saturn's in your 11th house. So you may have some kind of issue uh, come up in the 11th house with Saturn there with a friend. The 11th house is, your house is the house of friendships. It's the house of the groups that you belong to. It's um, your hopes and wishes. So you may want to achieve something. You have a strong desire to achieve something and to make a commitment to something. But there could be some issue around finances that you have to work out. There could be some tension around money. Either you owe a friend money or you have a falling out over money. It could also be a falling out that has to do with your self-worth. Like you may feel like, I don't know if I'm, what do I have to offer? Or I don't know if I'm good enough. Um, so you have to work on that feelings of self-esteem because you can get what you want. Saturn will give you the courage. You'll have to do the work, but Saturn can help you achieve your goal. It's just going to get you out of your comfort zone because you're going to be dealing with the gremlins, you know, the self-worth issues, the money issues. Um, but we also have Venus at the same time as this full moon. You're going to be aware of what you need to do. Uh, lunar eclipse sometimes can eclipse people out of your life because it brings completions or endings. It can bring sudden things that are happening that you couldn't, that you didn't expect. Um, but Venus is conjunct Chiron at this full moon. And so that's like a healing aspect. Venus rules money and love. So, and Venus is in your first house. It's in Aries now. So, and Chiron is in Aries. So there's something that you, that needs healing in your life. Um, so whatever it is, it's time for you to heal and accept love and accept and realize like I'm worthy of love. I am worthy of money. If you've had any psychological blockages that kept you away from abundance, that kept you away from love, you can heal that now. Um, so you have a lot of support because Mars is conjunct Neptune. You know, it's Neptune is about manifesting a dream. It's also about spirituality, having an awakening, some kind of spiritual awakening. It's sextile Pluto. You have to go deep. Uh, you have to really, you can't just skim the surface of things with this full moon. You're realizing, you know, I've got to, I've got to become empowered. I've got to take action. I can't wait for other people to do things for me. I have to do it. But it also, and it might get you out of your comfort zone a little bit because maybe you're not used to the commitment or the, the work that's involved with Saturn. You know, it's, it may feel hard to achieve a goal. You may feel like, I don't know if I have what it takes. Or you may have problems with authority figures like that you feel are standing in your way. Um, but there are hurdles to overcome with, with Saturn, with the Saturn square. But um, the way out of that T-square is through the, uh, through the Leo energy, which is show people what you can do. Honor yourself. That Leo is about, look at me, look at me. It's not about, oh, I'm not good enough. It's about, look what I can do. Look at my skills. So have faith in yourself and your ability at this full moon. And take charge. Take action. Take action to heal whatever you need to heal. But don't lose sight of the goal. Go after it. Don't let insecurities hold you back. Don't let any kind of psychological block hold you back. Or feelings of un, un, being not worthy. Or feelings of, you know, if you're not getting what you deserve, you need to go for it. And you say, I deserve it. I deserve love. I deserve money. If you're not making enough at your job, find another job where they value and appreciate you. If it's a relationship, if you're not getting enough love from a relationship, find another connection where you feel valued and loved and, and appreciated. You can have that this month. So then we have this new moon. Um, and at this new moon, Mars has moved into Aries. So now you've got three planets in your, in your first house. When Mars moves from Pisces to Aries, you're going to feel a new energy, a surge of energy, because it'll be in your first house, and Mars is strong in Aries. Mars is at home in Aries. So, um, and with Jupiter, you're really going to feel more optimistic toward the end of the month and around this new moon, and the new moon is happening in your third house. That's the house of siblings, friends, your local environment, so you may have a new beginning to connect with relatives that you haven't seen in a while. Especially because Mercury will be retrograde, so it it brings people from the past back. Um, you're gonna feel real excited to. Um, Chiron's gonna be in your first house, Mars, and Jupiter, and it's all and it's sextile. Um, kind of sext. Well, I don't know. If it's sextile Mercury. It's a it's an out of sign sextile. 
Um, but Mercury is going to be trining Pluto. Mercury's retrograde, Pluto's retrograde. Trining Pluto in your 10th house, Mercury in your 2nd house. So you may revisit something that you started earlier and maybe didn't work out. Maybe you have to go back and rethink and renegotiate something um, that involves your life direction, your life path. And Venus is going to be squaring Pluto. It's an out of sign square because Pluto's at the end of Capricorn, almost in Aquarius. And Venus is in Scorpio at early degrees. I mean, in Taurus, I'm sorry. So there could be some power struggles. Um, you might have some power struggles around money. Or if you're negotiating a contract in your career, you may have to, you know, um, negotiate a better salary or they may not want to give you what you, what you deserve. So you need to, um, without going over the top, because with Mars and Aries and Jupiter and Aries, the only caution is overdoing it, you know, going over the top where you're just too much energy. So you just don't, you know, be courageous, speak up, but don't, you know, don't go full blast, you know, tame yourself down because you may come across as argumentative and like, you know, you have that warrior energy. Mars is in your first house. Um... So don't go overboard with it, but you have to, you'll have to have some negotiation this month around career and money, financial things, and even with love, because Venus, um, but you have to, you know, recognize your worth. Don't settle for less, but know that it'll, it's going to be a struggle, a little bit of a struggle, and you're not going to just get it handed to you. Like no one's going to say, here, here's your, you know, big salary. Here's your, you know. You have to work at it. You have to negotiate for it. But that doesn't mean, you know, give up. It means just just think about how you can present your arguments in a way that shows that you deserve what, you, what you're asking for. Show your gifts. Show your talent. Um, let's see, where's Neptune? Neptune's in the 12th house. So you're going through some spiritual, you know, soul searching, like a dark night of the soul with Neptune in the 12th. And Saturn's in the 11th. Which is, yes, you can achieve a goal or a dream, but you have to put the work in. You have to make a commitment. And Saturn is actually showing you who your friends are. Because the 11th house is friendship, and Saturn is about reality, showing you the reality of a situation. So you may leave certain people behind that you feel are not really in on Team Aries. You might, you know, not spend so much energy on people that are not really on your side or helping you achieve your goals. But you... Save that energy for the people that are worthy, that have been there for you. Um, because you can achieve something. You can really f uh, have major healing this month. And a major progress in achieving a goal if you can overcome the hurdles that I talked about. So love is definitely on. Um, and if you're willing to do the work and make a commitment, you can have everything you desire. So before I... I, oh, I forgot to do the uh, card. So let me see what the um, what the message is from the fairies. These are, these are the fairy oracle cards. Before we close, I'm going to see what the fairies have to say for you, for, for me. Um, so Mercury retrograde, you know, it's a good time to go back to something from the past and redo it. Like redo your resume. Rethink and renegotiate a contract. You know, maybe you signed a contract in haste and now you're thinking, well, I should have got more money or I need to rethink this. Um, so it's a good time to go back and redo things. It could bring people from the past back into your life. Um, what you don't want to do is if you have to start something new to, and you're signing a new contract with a new person, read the fine print. If you're traveling, Leave a lot of time for delays because Mercury sometimes screws up communication. Um, things, you know, the, especially technology starts to go haywire. So let's see. New location. You might be moving in May. Let me get this. Um, let me get this book here. A change of venue is coming your way. Most likely you are moving to a new residence. However, this could also mean that you're changing the location of your employment. Um, maybe you've been thinking about... The fairies are very much in touch with geographical changes. They sense that your energy is drawing you to a new location. Perhaps you've been thinking about moving to a new home. With the, And this card signifies it's time to consider that change. 
So that's my forecast, Aries. If you like this reading, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, leave a comment if this resonated with you. This is a general reading, so it may not resonate with everyone. If you want a private reading where we just deal with your issues and your specific situation, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website, and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, I want to say thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for your likes, your subscribes, your comments. Um, if you're new, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Have a wonderful May, and I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.